The Art of True Response by Cole Inspired by Right Use of Will The Mechanics of Separation The art of true response is the ability to truly communicate with one's own feelings, which then helps one to communicate with others on a deeper level, a level that is not just mental or verbal. Feeling then becomes a guiding light in successful mutual exchange, whatever the situation. This ability is, to a great extent, lost. And many people are not really in touch with all of themselves, or with the true part of themselves, and most are certainly not in touch with the feeling body, which lies denied below their conscious awareness. There is a split between thought and feeling, and this is the cause of all evil. Notice that if you skimmed over the above statement, I recommend you read it again, and herein lies the secret to healing. In most cases, feelings are not equal to thoughts. They lay hidden under clouds of denial, while the mind is preoccupied with stories and overflooded with information. To find complete oneness with ourselves... All feelings need to be recognized, accepted, and then evolved along with the other parts of us. Here are some guidelines on how to do this easily and without much trauma, confusion, and the endless excessive thinking or verbalizing that makes us oblivious to this realm of denied feelings. This is a real solution to the human dilemma. The most important step in this evolution is to realize that what we usually think of as our feelings are not. They are thoughts that seem like feelings, but aren't. In most cases, even after having read the previous sentence, you will still believe these mental ideas are true feelings. But these endless descriptions and long stories only keep us away from what is really happening. They are an avoidance of feeling. Feelings don't talk. Minds talk. Feelings feel. When mind is busy thinking, there is no feeling to ground it by providing the felt wisdom it needs. Things don't make sense to us, and the world we inhabit is not seen for what it really is. Once feelings are accepted as an equal, they begin to flow upward. They accompany our life like music and provide wisdom beyond imagination. Feelings have a profound ability to help us navigate to our destination and make healthy choices. Therefore, the first step is to develop a new relationship with them. Now, this might seem hard at first, but it will become increasingly easy when we realize that feelings are here to enrich us, provide nurturance, and bring balance to our hearts. There is no true heart or sense of enlightenment without feelings, period. Much more could be said regarding feelings, but let's not delay any longer. Steps to Healing and Complete Recovery Relax. Take a slow breath and allow yourself to feel. Invite a feeling that you find unacceptable and notice what happens to your body. Feelings like shame a sense of weakness, inadequacy, terror, hate, or shyness are a few examples. The feeling that is right to start with will come to the surface. Trust this is the right one. Make sure you allow this feeling to be felt, and then felt some more. Remember, feelings express by being felt, not by being talked about. Instead of recoiling from it, establish an attitude of strong intent to get to know this part of yourself. Remember, it is trying to tell you something, maybe something of great importance, but it might be in very bad shape because of your constant rejection of it. So you need to nurse it back to health. Just feeling this friendlier attitude toward this feeling might bring a few tears. Allow them, and do not let your mind distract you from the feeling, and stay away from judgment. Be open to feel more. Try this several times with the first feeling that comes up that you judge as negative or unpleasant. Step 1. Talk to it. Once you determine what the feeling is, begin to establish honest communication with it. Do this out loud and for a while. Allow yourself to notice any discomfort. 
It might feel ridiculous and uncomfortable, but don't let this stop you. Say hello to the feeling, just to break the ice. Hello, shame. Hey, I want to be your friend. Imagine you met a stranger and you are determined to get to know her. Sometimes this can have a startling effect on you, since this fiend has never before received any acknowledgement, love, or acceptance, but rather much rejection, non-acceptance, and avoidance. And no wonder it's in such bad shape. Step 2. Accept the feeling's responses to you. Ask yourself, can I accept this feeling? Let the answer arise spontaneously. Be honest. Say a real no is often more honest than saying a fake yes, and you need to determine what feels truer. If the answer is no, ask yourself again, is it okay that my true response is no? And again, wait for the reply. This reply must emerge from deep within, so do not make the old mistake of getting quick answers from your mind. If the reply is another no, continue to ask, is that okay? You can ask, is it okay that it's not okay that it's not okay, and so on. No might come up endlessly. Just continue asking until you get a real yes. Yes is a form of acceptance that this feeling desperately needs. At times a person trying to be spiritual will say, well, of course I accept this feeling. Well, in truth they don't, and this will get them nowhere. Feelings don't evolve without acceptance. Most people don't have true acceptance for their feelings. But they also have non-acceptance for their non-acceptance. This locks the feelings into a prison, and they begin to rot. They turn ugly and scary as they continue to be denied. The way to heal is to say to yourself, I may have a feeling of non-acceptance at the moment, but I accept this in myself. Seeing one's level of non-acceptance with clarity leads to unconditional acceptance. Step 3. Explain to the feeling why you had to deny it. Take the time to ask yourself what are the reasons you had to deny this feeling. When the answers come, speak directly to the feeling as if you were talking to a friend with whom you could not talk to for a long time. Some examples are, I did not even know I could talk to you. I thought you were not real or could be made conscious, or I was frightened of what you might tell me. These simple, honest answers are like soothing waters to most of those dried up and rejected lost feelings. Talking to them will allow the feelings to begin to sense that you care. Ten minutes is pretty good. Get creative. Saying, I denied you because you are an awful feeling that I despise, and you always come out when I least need you and I feel like I need to hide you and hide from you, and I simply feel closed down in your presence, is much more helpful than being nice. Feelings need to feel your integrity. They need you to show your true face to them. The next step will need real courage. Step 4. Apologize to the feeling. Out loud is always best. Notice the resistance. Your mind might think. Well, why should I apologize for this feeling? I'm right. When you see this, the long-standing separation between you and the feeling begins to become apparent. Mind has a habit of thinking it is right, but when it comes to feelings, it has been mistaken for a long time. Feelings are actually a reflective agent that allows mind to really know what it's doing. Now, you can say, for example, Shame. I am sorry for being the detached dictator always telling how you should be. I don't even believe you can forgive me for hating you for so long, but now I stand corrected. Please accept my apology. Step 5. Ask the feeling's forgiveness. Ask this feeling to forgive you for denying it and excluding it from participating in your life. Trust that it has amazing intelligence and the ability to forgive you in the most profound way and to show you its beauty and all the gifts it has to offer. At this point, you might feel that this feeling is beginning to feel different, lighter, actually quite nice and easy to feel. See, it's not really the feeling itself that feels unpleasant. It's the rejection of it that makes your whole emotional body feel separate from it. 
Step 6. Forgive yourself for denying it. Here is a chance to accept and forgive yourself for not giving yourself your full freedom to move and expand. You could repeat, I forgive myself for denying my feelings of several times or use any form of forgiveness you feel is appropriate. Let your feelings guide you here. Sometimes forgiveness feels impossible. In that case, you can try. I accept myself for, and I forgive myself for not accepting myself earlier. Note, I don't really understand the previous sentence. Am I accepting myself here for not being able to forgive? You can repeat this slowly several times until you feel the release. This can also be applied to unforgiven parts of your early life. Without acceptance, nothing really heals. Step number seven. Release the judgments involved. What are they? Oftentimes our feelings are named, judged, and misunderstood. But as they evolve, they may change and become new. Therefore, it is healthy to release these judgments and replace them with new understandings. For example, you can say, I release the judgment that this feeling is in fact bad, unpleasant, and or something to avoid. Then allow the feeling to be participating in your daily life. Rigid judgments that we hold can keep our whole world locked up in their unmoving grip. Some beliefs are true only in our own minds and can keep us from seeing and experiencing new possibilities. 8. Negotiate a new relationship between this part of yourself and the rest of you. You might invite this feeling part to be present with you now. If it is not yet fully transformed, you can repeat the process until it is. In this way, you will train yourself to express what is really happening inside you without drama and without burdening your close ones with your misunderstanding of yourself. If you really get into it, you can find all of your denials, give them release, and free the flow of energy in your body and in your life. You can apply this process to all aches, pains, illnesses, depressions, and in fact to anything you find in your life that is not completely happy.